Do you think I should look at you during the thing or no? Do you what want do you to? Do you want to try it? I guess we could try it. Yeah, why not? We're both very attractive people. That's true. That's true. <laughs> it does it do you think it hurts in terms of the um the recording? I don't know. I can tell you if you're off mic quicker. Oh okay. yeah, you're off mic. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about this. I don't know. So it feels like okay, let's the, try it. it. feels like we're at the table again. That's true. Wow. How are you, friend? I'm doing all right. How are you? No, I meant that like I haven't seen you live in a long time. Oh, I'm doing all right. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you see, this is it. I can see all your visual cues. Yeah. And I can see now. Oh, my God. What? <laughs> that I took as you like to eat a gun. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh my goodness gracious! All right. Um, How was your week? Ex- it was uh, just like every other day. I'm trying to think. You know, a lot of times over the weekend, I go, oh, "I can't wait for next Monday." Oh boy, I've got so many fantastic things. T G I M. T G I M. No, because I did some things that I thought would be good for the podcast. Really? Like I um. This one. No, not this one. For okay. the one that's uh, uh no, I uh, I saw licorice pizza, for example. Really? Yeah. Did you enjoy it, it? It it was not good. No. Uh oh, wait, should I not tell you that it's not that good? Why should you not tell me that it's not good? Because you can get your hopes up or down. My hopes had no skin in this game. Here's the thing. A lot of people like uh Susan and people tell me it was shot nicely, so yeah, uh, I heard it was shot nicely. That's not enough. It's not enough. not enough. And actually, I'm not trying to claim like I have no eye. I do have. Ooh, uh, but uh, I just pretend to look at myself. I in did. The I saw it this yeah. time. <laughs> so, um, what was I saying? Do you know? Okay, so oh, I. Oh damn it, I, Andy! I can see a plane flying over. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the movie. Does you learn nothing about any of? Here's the thing: it is a really, really awful script. Okay. It's really awful to the degree of which I keep uh, projecting my own feelings about him and to why his script is bad, which I think is probably is not the right way to go. I mean, who knows? But it sounds like he's so full of himself. Plus, I met him many, many years ago. I uh, met him many, many go. years that ago. Taint, that taints every single thing. It taints thing. everything. Every single he, thing. <laughs> I'll never forget meeting him because I met him through Amy Mann and Michael Penn. Oof, ow, uh, ow, sorry. What was that? No, no, you got hurt by the name? Yeah, the name hit my foot. I didn't even tell you that Norman Lear was there. Yeah. It doesn't fit. Yeah. So I met him at a party when Michael Penn was, had just written the music for Magnolia. And uh, so they were having a big party at uh, this guy's house or something. No, no, Michael Penn and Amy's house. So I met him, and this guy was really a little bit full of himself. Yeah. And he used an expression that I had never heard before. First of all, he did he did a party thing. He did a party thing. Yeah. So he was running, and he was running the room. Yeah. He was, was trying. Try it, it, even... it was a PTA meeting. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's president of the PTA? Yeah, I did know that. So, uh, what was I saying? Okay, what was I saying? Uh, so he was, was he was he was running the room. He was running the room, and he had a party trick. He was like, "Hey, hey, can you try it? Now you try it. You try it. Can you do it? You can't do it. It has something to do with something to do with you holding your hands up and you're trying to do something. It's a party trick. I know you've seen before. I don't know that I have. <laughs> and, okay, so <laughs> even with the visuals this week, that didn't help me. <laughs> well, and this is also when he. That was like he, the linking rings with your thumb and forefingers, fingers, like what you seem to be doing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here's the thing. So he's there and he's running the room. Mm-hmm. And Sammy and Michael's, I forgot what it was. So then he starts telling the story. I can't even believe it, man. I can't believe it. I got seven lines coming in, two lines coming in the den. It's a clusterfuck over there. It's a goddamn clusterfuck. I had never heard that. Before my entire You've never life. heard Clusterfuck before? No, because this was about this was when Magnolia came out. I'm sorry. Clusterfuck predates Magnolia by decades. Yeah, but it doesn't predate Magnolia in the sense that you would use it as a party to impress people. Well, I had never heard it before. Okay, but that's see that's but that's your skewed vision. 
Because okay, had, had, I, had I been there, I wouldn't be going, look where he's pulling clusterfuck out of the air. I wouldn't be doing that. No, no, no. I had never heard of it before. I think it was new then. I don't think it was. Maybe you had got a. I'm saying it was, it predated Magnolia by decades, clusterfuck. You might. Okay. Now I'm going to have to actually turn it into a horribly uncomfortable argument between us. No, I really don't. I really don't (laughs) know about that. I I challenge your, uh, I challenge that. And you know, I was on that show called, I might have liked to brag. I'm dying up here, that show I was on. Yeah. And so I kept bugging them the whole week I was on there. It was about the comedy store time period. I kept bugging them the whole week I was on there. That that word didn't exist back then. That word, that expression, uh, fellas, they it's were old, just, the older men here. They were just trying to let you down easy, Andy. And a couple of them I got. You can like, always uh, play the anachronism card. No, but I mean, a couple of them I was right about, like uh, like things that... Ne- Wait, what? What? I'm saying that was one of them. You wanted to throw a wait what? In wait there. what? There were no wait what's back then. Yeah, they said so. Um, um, except for Desi Arnaz. The... <laughs> wait what? But then I got. Uh, Ricky, so I'm I know pregnant. that I'm sometimes wait. Sometimes what? I'm wrong. Wait what? Sometimes I'm wrong about the words. Yeah. Like in other words, you're probably right about this, but part of me is well, like, well, if we keep arguing, it'll be a self fulfilling clusterfuck. Yeah, but here's <laughs> here's the thing. I love. This part of the argument, because I'm so sure of myself, and uh, this part of my personality has not worked out well in the past. Because I'm, I, I noticed if my percentage of being right was like ninety percent, I'd be all over you. Yeah, I don't think so, Josh. Clusterfuck came into practice in 1995, and uh, PTA was the first person to use it. Right. But I don't have that knowledge yeah. in my head. But anyway, he was tr- the fact that he was a clusterfuck, man. It's just a clusterfuck. It was just so. Anyway, he was acting very, very cool, and um, I had never. I also was put off by him because he had said he had in the magnolias, magnolias. Just up the name. He had frogs that fell from the sky. Yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about? I do. I liked that movie when I first saw it. I, I don't know if it holds up. I, saw it. I fucking hated it. <laughs> No, 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 no. Here's one of my problems, Josh. I get into this guy's a genius. I loved Boogie Nights. Everyone got into this guy's a genius with him, and I loved Boogie Nights too. And that is, I think, it. Okay, so we all love Boogie Nights. Would we like Boogie Nights again now? Yeah, I think so. All right, so I loved Magnolia when it came out, and I was disturbed. I was uh, what's the word when you're deluded? Deluded. It's just, it's just. There's great stuff in it because Philip Seymour Hoffman is great, but it's got the, but it's, it's, te- it is ultimately. It's a pretentious uh, fucking clusterfuck. pretentious movie, yes, right. And does he? Is the point of that movie that he sleeps with his daughter or something? I don't understand. I can't, I can't separate the point from that movie. Okay, but there was some kind of weird stuff like that, right? I mean, well, at your next PTA Who's meeting, the guy you can who ask. Died? What's that? At your next PTA meeting, you can ask. <laughs> Who's the guy who, uh, not the, uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman was the lead. Wasn't it Jason Robards the, in that? I think so. But then who's the guy who died who was her player father? And he's actually a great actor. I don't remember. Oh, go, go to hell. Well, get me somebody at your You're house. You're sitting at your computer, Andy. Fucking look it up. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do it. It's too much. I can't do it. It's too, it's too, it's too, uh, I don't want to do it because if I look it up, I will look it up the wrong way. All right. Movie. Do you want me to look it up? Because I now, I, now after last week, I got I had two strikes against me last week already. I wake up to Jen's voice text that I'm I was wrong <laughs> about William Goldman writing Goodwill Hunting, which apparently he did a pass, the final pass on. Right. This he was didn't good. get Wasn't... no Oscar for it, but that's okay. Um, yeah, so, and I don't yeah, like so Jen won't... being on the East Coast because she can correct me before I wake up, and I don't like that's that. That's true. Yeah. She has an advantage. And the other thing was, I didn't know that uh, that uh, Rami Jaffe, the keyboard player who played on our album from the Wallflowers, was in fact is now a Foo Fighter. Okay, so here's the thing: when I get a group text with me, you, and Jen, yeah. and you know it's early in the morning, and you know I am not that smart because I don't think I am smart. I mean, a smart person would be able to answer the phone in the morning and talk, right? Sure. This is where so, the, this is where the camera is killing me. <laughs> so you, <laughs> so you guys, all of a sudden I go, oh, I'm not getting, I'm not getting some joke I should be getting 
from the audio thing. You don't bring me into it. You don't say to me, oh, by the way, Andy, you don't know what we're talking about. So I sat there thinking I was an idiot. Yeah. Did you know what we were talking about? No. All right. I don't even know what you're talking about now. <laughs> I understand. So who's a, who is a what now? He's a uh, who? Yeah, it doesn't matter. No, no, come on. Tell me the name of the group because I'm very excited about it. He's a Foo Fighter. Yes. Someone's in the Foo Fighters yes. that you didn't Last realize. Week they were, someone wrote, and I apologize to, I'll, I'll go back and look, uh, wrote to me, I didn't know that Josh had done an album with a Foo Fighter. <laughs> and I said, I, I didn't know I did an album with a Foo Fighter. And I said, Rami, you know, we did one with a uh, Wallflower, Rami Jaffe. Was the you know the guy who played right, the, the right, Hemingway. right? But turns out he's now an official Foo Fighter. Boom! I want to tell you something right now, Josh. I hear the not Foo a founding all, Foo, not a founding Foo. I listen to the Foo Fighters all the time. No, you don't. On I do on Music Choice. I don't pay for it. All right, okay. <laughs> music Choice, and I'm not. Look, I don't want to brag. Yeah, I watch Music Choice. You're learning to fly. <laughs> so, um, uh. I don't really, I, I, I don't love them. I think I told you this last week. You we've, know, we've, gonna... we've gone over this a half dozen times. Okay, now. but no, no, there's something else now. <laughs> when I, but now I'm starting to, no, see, this is where you're right. You're right <laughs> to try and stop me, but then you have to be pleasantly surprised okay. when a new piece of information comes If I in. wasn't open to being pleasantly surprised <laughs> by you, we would have shut this shit down. <laughs> a long time ago. Yes. Okay, but now, now I really do think I have dementia because I can't Foo Fighter. Remember. Okay. Okay, so I listened to Music Choice, and then, you know, he's waiting on a war. Here's when I le- turned from adult alternative to regular alternative. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Every time a Dave Matthews song comes on. I think you're right. I just I don't right. understand it. What would you say? His very <laughs> first song. I mean, he doesn't he sound like a, he, to me, he sounds like a friend of mine who got a band who, you know, like a guy I jammed with. In, but I think that's, that's very, the vibe he's going for exactly, honestly. It is, right? Yes. He's trying to be your friend, and he's trying to make you feel like you're jamming with him. That's true. And I never, when I used to go up to... Uh, not to defend, punch. not to be a Dave Matthews apologist by any means. No. But I do, but I, I do feel like the jam band spirit is just that. Right. But, and then every once in a while, I use him as a barometer, and I go to uh, uh, alternative. And here's the thing I actually do too, Josh. I have an argument with the TV sometimes. I go... I don't know that that is adult alternative. Now, what kind of a person, what kind of a life is that? Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Then the other night I went, whoa, 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 whoa. You just played that Lumineers song on adult alternative. I switched to alternative. Right. As if there's I'm a stupid? guy, as if there's a guy moving carts around somewhere. I think there is. <laughs> I think there is. How come? Okay. Now, here's my question to you. How come uh, whenever I listen to it? I'm more likely to enjoy the alternative, I guess, because I don't want. Cla- I can't listen to a classic rock anymore. Can you listen to a rock thing that has supplies some of the music you'd hear on K Earth? You don't want that around the house. Well, what's weird is that K Earth is now early nineties. <laughs> oh, they- <laughs> yes. that's very depressing. Yes, because they they were they were my boyfriends back. When yeah, I absolutely, it's K Earth one hundred and one. I know you want to leave me, boom, boom, I refuse. <laughs> K Earth 101. You know what's amazing? That that station still has a following, I think. No, it doesn't. Sure. Let's turn No, but I mean, I do. I mean, because it is now, literally, you turn it on and you go, holy fuck, that's an oldie song? (laughs) Oh, God. Hey, how could. Are you telling me that the power station. Stick on me. (laughs) Are you telling me the power station is a. I don't know if that's a group, is it? It's a group that Michael DeBar was in. Oh, that's how I know it. Probably. Because he came. This is how good your movie is. Because he came and he played with them on some show. Live Aid. And it was a big little show. little show called Live Aid. A little show called Live Aid. But I don't remember it because I never watched it. And then he came on. It was a big thing. And, uh... Oh, God. Josh. 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 Huh? Daddy? <laughs> Daddy? Mommy, don't hurt me again. These are not good jokes. No. Mommy, don't hurt me again. <laughs> By the way, it's thanks not your a fault, lot. Andy. It's not your fault. Thanks a lot for scheduling two of the shoots, two of our thought spiral. What are the odds that two of the thought spirals would be on the anniversary of my the death of my family? 
So I want, don't get mad at me today. <laughs> March 21st, 2020. Mom day, mom day. Mom day. Mom left this. What do they do when they drop this mortal coil? They shuffle from this mortal coil. Is that Shakespeare? Uh, no, I think it's a uh, bazooka Joe. <laughs> I'll tell you, maybe I was, maybe I wasn't, uh, maybe I was easily entertained. I just, I just love Bazooka Joe comics. I just love them. I love that they had no, this is my style of comedy because a lot of times there was no joke. Right. <laughs> and then how do you have a character named Sluggo? What is that? How is that a character that he just wears a turtleneck all the time? Okay. Uh, someone take it, take me out of this. <laughs> take me out of this. Beam me up. <laughs> So let's put a button on licorice pizza. All right. It was this guy. I, I, have not, I have not been drawn to it. Although Allison, I mean, that's Allison's, you know, that's like her, uh, a serious man is to me. You know, she grew up in the Valley. Oh, she loved the movie? No, I just mean she grew up in the Valley. And, right. So she might be disappointed with it. She might, or she might be uh, nostalgic. Well, what, but they, they don't even Despite show that her much. her childhood of... being horrible. <laughs> <laughs> well, First of all, someone I I brought up the point they didn't say licorice pizza, but now when someone says they whispered it, and and do people know the licorice pizza was a record store? I think or so. that doesn't matter. I don't know. I don't know. I you just, saw the movie. I didn't. Oh oh oh! oh. The story I was going to say was when Magnolia came out, he had a scene where frogs drop from the sky, and every interview he would go on, you go, "This is an actual thing that's happened." That's the crazy thing. Do you know what's actually ha happened? Historic. Who gives a fuck? You did, apparently. More than now, anyone. Now, here's my question to you, Josh. <laughs> if, if my theory is correct, in which case this guy is full of himself, thinks he everything he writes is genius, um, when was the last movie he did that was okay? Because this movie really wasn't good. Well, like I'm, I'm saying, just like I'm saying, it's Boogie Nights. But there's probably one in there that was... Uh, didn't you see The Master and the Thing? Wasn't I that... I didn't like The Master and the uh, Thing, no. How about There Will Be Blood? Uh, that, yeah, I'll give you. I'll give him that one. I think that's where I heard about it. You told me about There Will Be Blood. Maybe. Yeah. And Maybe then, I just took your milkshake. I don't know that reference. Then you haven't seen There Will Be Blood. <laughs> oh, no, no, I haven't seen it. No, no. No, is, but uh, the, the other one I was going to watch because it was about, I thought it was uh, ostensibly about science, maybe about Scientology secretly. The Master. But then I, it is, right? Yeah. But... Okay, I'm done with him. I'm done with him, and I'm sorry. <laughs> PTA meeting closed. <laughs> but uh, now the next one I want to watch is, I think I watched another one over the weekend, too. I watched The Power of the Dog. Yeah. Or did well, I already watch that last week? You watched that last week, yeah. Oh, okay. Didn't Good, like it so God. much. Did not like it so much. Uh, but it, uh, I didn't love it, but it was nothing like uh, Licorice Pizza. Yeah. Because Licorice Pizza was like, the the dialogue was... What is, what is Licorice Pizza on now? Uh, uh, on uh, what did, channel? Did, did you pay for it or did you stream it? Oh, no, I got a screener. Oh, okay. Um, I think it's, is it Apple T TV? I don't know. I have no idea. No idea. of what. See, now I can see you and still now I'm out. I'm back to where I used to be. It doesn't, feel that, feel it doesn't really feel that much different, I have to admit. I've, I've been picturing you this whole time. It seems still more intimate to me. All right. Because when I'm at your house, uh, I can be, I don't know if you've ever seen this about me, but I was easily distracted. Yeah. So like, uh, Josh, now it's, how long have you had that there? Oh, me, baby. I know. I know. See, I'm staying within the frame. No, you know, the thing is, here's, <laughs> here's the thing, though. When there's a dead, you know how I will sell myself out quickly if there's a dead spot. So now, if there's any dead spots, I'm looking at you during the dead spot. Yeah. I go, oh, yeah, that's why. That's why. Look at this lummox. <laughs> no, no, I mean, <laughs> it's not look at this lummox. It's look at somebody. Is it better to be looking at someone during a dead spot or to not be looking? And maybe it doesn't matter. Well, it might, it might convince you that the dead spot isn't, in fact, a true loss of personal connection so much. Wouldn't that be good pause. if I could learn that? Why yeah. can't I learn that? I don't know. Maybe we'll learn you. Yeah, th maybe this will be. I'll learn to love stand up even more if this continues. Could be, <laughs> could be. There's going to be another variant coming. I think it was pretty said. funny. My manager, I like 
after 25 years goes, Hey, you're pretty good. <laughs> like suddenly he's like, Hey, you're a good stand up. <laughs> Is that you. true? <laughs> well, so he wasn't encouraging in the old days. He, it was just not like, it was sort of a separate thing. Yes. Like he never really, he never really represented me as a stand up. That was always sort of my little side hustle. <laughs> to show well, also, stand up was what you brought to the table. You already had that. Yeah. Uh, it's not like back in the, like back in those days they didn't have uh the people at these big agencies who'd be booking like big acts that's completely separate from the comedy club yeah circuit am i making any sense a little bit a little bit <laughs> no but it, i was no, back in the days when we were getting bookings they were not booked by by big show business people they were booked by the comics those clubs yeah absolutely in no. general as i always said that the venn diagram between show business and road comedy barely overlaps i wish i could one of these days if i look at my i don't know why they're what venn diagram means and now people show me they show me the the things connecting but is it named after Venn at that, least yes i think it is v-e-n-n -N. okay before you finish it tell me what the overton window means uh, it means the Rick amount Overton. of time it takes for Rick Overton to remember that he worked with you and not reintroduce <laughs> himself to you each time he meets you. But you, ha I, I'm, I'm getting the, the sense maybe you never heard of the Overton window. I have not, no. Okay, so this is what these guys on these science-y type shows go, or their political shows sometimes, they go, oh, we're going to have to adjust the whole Overton window. Yeah, and then I don't have the energy to look at it. Yeah. Look it up. Right. Which I should. Well, you're still stuck on Venn diagram, which is a pretty big gap right. in your knowledge. Right. You know? I really can you explain to me in a short way that I don't have to look it up? Oh uh, yeah. A Venn diagram is a diagram using circles. So you have one circle saying let's say uh um one circle represents all the people, all the very talented people in show business. Thank you. Another <laughs> circle represents all the very ambitious people in show business. Oh. And so where those two things overlap, that little area where they overlap is all the successful people in show business. But it could be oh, it could be this much, argument. it could be this much. But that's the Venn diagram. Is how much do these two sets have oh. overlap and contain both? So it's an actual thing. It's an actual thing. Um I'm trying to think of another thing that they use for uh that I don't understand, but this makes more sense. So, it still seems like you're you're you're. There's a part in there where you're making you're putting your own thing in there. You know what I mean? Well, it's, it's like a you're diagram. saying they it is a diagram. It, it is right, but I'm saying like to me, I think of a Venn diagram. Like I think of when something gets popular, it's a Venn diagram. I think of them when we see that overlapping area that they've proven something through a theorem. But no, they it's a statistical analysis. Right. It's the same thing with the Overton window. Like if we if there was one circle where it's everything you remember and the other circle was everything yes. we've said on the show, there would be very over, little overlap in those two circles. Oh, yes. But how do you use it, I guess, is my problem. I mean, what, why do why is that a, a, how is that illustrative it's a, it's a or help you? It's a graph. It's a way to transmit information. Yeah, I guess I don't really do well with graphs. I, I notice I don't do that. you do not. Yeah, because I'm looking at uh, I I I w I've been walking longer, and I don't want to mean to brag oh, up to three miles a day. I'm not someone who tries to say I'm better than. I don't think you're walking three miles a day, and uh, I noticed they have this breakdown on the. So you're Apple. you're calling from Florida right now? <laughs> it's a good joke. I like that joke. We don't know when he's done, so I I try to look when I'm done. Ten thousand steps. I say it was the other day. It was ten thousand, and then all of a sudden. I it, it eludes me. It eludes me how to look at these kind of like once I find out this is by the week, this is by the month, yeah. this is by the year. But I don't. My mind doesn't work that way. My mind is not good with intelligence. Yeah. <laughs> not what we'd call a thinker. <laughs> He's not a thinker. He's not a thinker. So, um, I don't know what I was saying. I swear to God. You don't like graphs. You don't do well with them. I'm not on grass, grass right now. I thought you said grass, but I know you said graphs later. Yeah. But, uh, no, no, no. What are you talking about? I haven't had, I haven't smoked pot since 
eight or nine hours ago. I'm clean. I'm clean, Josh. All right. You know, I missed so much of this when I was smoking pot. Yeah. Like my mind would feel cloudy. Yeah. Now I feel like I have a Prevagen mind. <laughs> Go ahead. Ask me a question. I'll answer it Prevagen like. Your mind's like an elephant, this guy. Um, uh, I started Prevagen. Eh, that's a bad, uh, was it three? Honey, did I start it three years ago? How would I know? Shouldn't you remember? I know I'm smarter. I told you to mem- write things down. <laughs> I drive Susan. We both drive each other crazy. We or we both enjoy how much we both hate. Yes, please. Yes, please. and she's holding a mug that says intelligence. More brain function. Yes, please. Yes, please. My, I'm, I told you the other day. My, uh, my current. Vicious hatred is. <laughs> My eyes feel like a combination of stress, dry, and sandpaper. And then the word <laughs> forms into this word, and she looks down and goes, "Stry paper." Oh, that's a good commercial. That I like though, because that you don't. Fr- what their argument was is you can't get it out of your mind. So you're running down to the store right now to buy uh, Visine. All right. Is it Visine? No. Ow! It's <laughs> not TV. Not TV. I watched a true crime thing where someone killed their killed the killed themselves. Who did they kill? Oh, her wife killed the husband with Visine. Oh, really? Yeah, but here's what she claimed: that every morning, I don't know why he did this. He put he would put Visine in his coffee, and he would use it as a laxative. I swear to God that I swear I'm telling the truth. I did not poison my husband with Visine. He did it on his own. He would say, I'm going to, I'll be in the bathroom. As you know, I swallow a little Visine to get the juices flowing. Huh. It doesn't just get the red out. <laughs> so, but you know what? I just want to tell people, uh, any of the listeners out there, I'm going to kill myself. Don't do that. You know, don't listen to that show and then go, oh, I'm going to swallow Visine. Right. It's a poison. It's an odorless, colorless poison. If you want, I'm just saying, look. But it's good for your eyes? This is the thing that's amazing. This, his wife, he died, right? Uh, I would hope when so. They found Otherwise, him. that's a faulty murder charge. When they found him, they were surprised that he was dead because his eyes were almost glistening with clearness. All right. His eyes were like, there was no red in his eyes. Yeah. He, it looked like he dreamy bedroom eyes. He went into this murder clear-eyed. <laughs> what? Now, am I giving people ideas? I don't want to get in trouble because I said something on the show that someone tried. I think you just became an accomplice to all future murders. <laughs> <laughs> you know, having OCD is really not that far from that, really. Yeah. <laughs> it really isn't <laughs> that far. I mean, even though... Uh, uh, um, conceptually, right. it's not that more crazy. Right. <laughs> hence, hence why I was able to get treatment for it. That's good. Yeah, because some people, if you, if, if the thing you, your disease is convinces you that you're right all the time, like for example, you're not going to believe this. I used to think <laughs> I thought I wasn't smart. Can you believe that? <laughs> what? One of the the smartest people in the world. So smart. So smart. First of all, I did I tell you that I, had, I got 250 on my uh, IQ test? It's unbelievable. That's amazing. It really is. Just that's one I more than even, that's one more than your dad, I think. I think my dad's it wasn't my dad's is it my dad's claim or what they claimed about my dad? It was your mom's what claim. We thought about, about it was your mom's claim about your dad was 180. 180, yeah. That can't be right, right? Uh, I hope I don't not. think they I hope have it's that not, number cuz he wasted he wasted his life if that was his uh, <laughs> He really could have helped a lot more people if that was the case. You know, he was very close to coming up with a unified field theory, but he just found the whole process annoying. Just aggravating. He's aggravating. (laughs) Aggravating. Oh, I can't stand one more day of being a celebrated world figure of Albert Einstein proportions. Right. I thought my father was as smart as Albert Einstein. I think that was my mistake. It sounds like. What's that? So did your father. It sounds like. This is, see, I think now 
now that we're talking about now that we're watching Death Week, you're watching Andy Kindler's Death Week. Uh, the March 10th, we started out with Andy Kindler's sister who passed away. We're ending up Death Week with his mother. <laughs> Ten days of fantastic, uh, shiver, shiver me temples. <laughs> Shiver me. I think I came up with a new expression. Shiver me timbles. There you go. Okay. I'm back now. I'm sorry about that outburst. That's okay. I'm okay now. All right. But but last week was rough. See what else I got. (laughs) I got other stuff. You got any stories for me? I don't have any real stories from the weekend. I kind of watched a lot of TV. Oh. Oh, does that mean you have stories or you don't have stories? Well, I don't know. Are those stories or are those just book well, reports? Well, if you saw something you liked, it would be good. <laughs> I, hadn't seen, I didn't see anything I liked very much. I watched, uh, which you wouldn't like because it's it's uh, hero-related, I watched the Luke Cage series that had migrated from Netflix to uh, to uh, Tell me what it's Disney about. It's a, it's a Marvel superhero. It's a uh, black uh, superhero based in Harlem. Uh, and is it, his it, last name Cage? Is Luke, Luke Cage? Luke Cage is the name of it, yeah. Oh, that's not his real name, right, though? Is uh, it that it is, real? is not his real name. But that's was his real name point. Peter Parker? Uh, no. no. <laughs> uh, and it was it was fun for a few episodes, and then it went off the rails plot-wise. And then, it's called, uh, so I'm not going to watch it, don't right? watch it, now. And I watched some of that Bad Vegan on Netflix. I was going to watch that. Uh, it, it suffers from Netflix docuseries syndrome badly. It suffers from four, you know, one episode stretched into four syndrome, real, real it's bad. Because like a, it's a real, I, it's a real small story. It really it has really? no real world ramifications at all, and it's uh, and it's stretched thin. <laughs> well, they have another one there. I was going to watch called Bad Roommate or something. They have a, I always try and watch the true crimey thing. Yeah. Yeah. How'd you end up watching that? Just just, just stumbled onto impulse it. Impulse thumb. Did you find anything good to recommend to me? I have a new, um, I have a new sort of uh, watching theory, which is watch ten minutes. You can turn it off. Mm-hmm. I don't think that. I think that's a. Uh, uh, I'm not saying you should. Uh, it's that t- those same ten minutes I could be spending flipping through things, deciding. Right. Just right. click something. Click something. That's why they ha- they came up with the try anything. What's it called? I, try anything. The, I feel lucky. Is it that one? No, that's I've, a Google thing. <laughs> I feel lucky is a Google thing. You're right. I have never I, pre- I have never once pressed the you choose something for me button ever. Yeah. No. I'm not happy when I uh, chose it on my own. Deep, that violates something deep within me. That whole idea. <laughs> yeah, because it's the it's the ultimate of mar. It's the right. end result of market. You know my we- algorithm better than me. I don't think so. <laughs> I started to watch. Um, on Netflix, the history of the uh, the the czar, the last czar is it called? I don't know what it's called. Not the last czar, but it could be the last czar. There was. Uh, one. Oh, was okay. So, but it's interesting. It's it's interesting. It's kind of like they they do the recreations, which I don't love, but they're not terrible. And then they have just historians talking about. It. Yeah. Um, that guy was fucked up. That last czar, Nicholas, Nicholas the thing. Yeah. Oh my god! Do you know about? I I don't know about the. I now I do know about. It, but I mean, why didn't I come into? Why didn't I come out of school, college, having a g- general idea of what happened in the world? Because you're on acid. <laughs> it's just so hard to. I think my my my. Uh, I literally had a history teacher that played us the movie Nicholas and Alexandra to teach us about that. Uh, is that a great movie? No, but it's it'll sort of oh, talk, it'll sort of okay. set the scene. Nicola and that was the name of his wife? I believe so, yeah. They were actually all I've learned so far is they were actually into each other or something. Yeah. They slept together and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm learning about Rasputin. Yeah. And I'm like, what do you what is that's not a real character, Rasputin? I'm gonna have this to Ras- somebody- I'm gonna have to Rasput you there. <laughs> I know, but I mean, he sounds like a, he sounds like, first of all, I'm not saying I liked him, but yeah. he really got over on the ladies. He did. Rasputin. Yeah. So he, I know he existed, but he did. He wasn't good. He wasn't good. They killed the shit out of him too. And he <laughs> did uh, Oh, like, the, the, the communist? Uh, yeah. They just like, there was like, you know, it was like, stab him, shoot him, poison him, put him in a bag, drown his body. <laughs> it was like. <laughs> 
Yeah, but after all the all said and done. He was worse than Heyman, this guy. <laughs> and look what happened. You know But the Mad Monk I, is a I, is a great is a great wrestling nickname, I think. What's it? The Mad Monk, which is what he was referred to as. Oh, that is a great name. Yeah. Oh, Rasputin was yes. the Mad Monk. Yeah. Oh, but I didn't realize until recently. Okay, I think I just realized I'm mixing up Rasputin with the, who's the guy who convinced you he's like a Svengali. <laughs> who's Svengali? Uh, I don't know who uh, the original Svengali was. But Rasputin but definitely, same- definitely fit into the Svengali category. But also kind of Rasputinish, right? Yeah, Rasputinesque. <laughs> but Rasputin was okay. So what I'm saying is Rasputin was a, a religious fella. Yeah, but he was crazy. Sounds yes. like yes, he was like and he, he was, was like a Russian David Koresh. I think it's Koresh. Don't Koresh me. <laughs> I love this kind of wordplay. So Rasputin, so he had something to do with them losing those things. Well, first of all, okay, but how come after that whole thing's over, we end up with uh, communism? It's just so... Because they murdered the wrong... them all? Oh, okay. And also the French Revolution, too. Yeah. I used to I used to love French, and I was always uh, uh, attracted to the uh, people who were supposedly behind the... Our, our revolution, right? Like... Uh-huh. Who are those names? They always go, it's just like, you know, Dylan would say, the Verlaine Venn and Rambeau. The diagram of things Andy knows versus the things Andy talks about. Yeah, what do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Am I, am I close to information? Lafayette, uh, you have arrived at a story. Right. So I thought the French Revolution, because I only studied American Revolution. I'd studied some of these things, but not well. I thought the, Mer- the French Revolution cause it had some of the same ideas that came to our, but it basically, it kind of sucked. Who, who, who brought in the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the guillotine? Yeah. You know how sometimes uh, you'll, you know how you be American, I don't know what the word is. That was their, like, uh, that was their murder motif. Right. You know how when like your part of being jingoistic is thinking that, um, I don't feel this way, but you go like, oh, those people, like when during the uh, Iranian thing, during the, uh, the, the, uh, Iraq thing, they're like, oh, they're, they behead people. They're like a more, they're more, what's the word? Medieval. They're more like not as civilized medieval, as us. Like to yeah, say. medieval, not as civilized. Well, how long ago were the French chopping off heads? 17, well, they into the 20th century, I believe, as, right, their, as right. their capital punishment. So I don't know what my point is, but get down off your high horse, I think is part of what my point is. Yeah. No, I mean, that whole idea, because I used to get mad, this really mad this during the whole, uh, um the whole after 9 11 thing i could because i hear it all the time when you hear people go oh they they're these terrorists are more less you know they're they're not there's just as many maniacs who are american who are there's no uh you can't corner the market is this your is this your trump yeah we're we got a lot of murderers too i don't know what this is i think it's this would be if you wanted to do a before and after about uh, being articulate or something, because <laughs> I kind of know what I'm saying, but it's, it's, it's off the rail. It's, it goes off the rail, and then also I don't have the interest in it anymore. But you know what I kind of meant, right? Kind of, but I, I don't. I don't think it's a you know, like cutting off a reporter's head in 2015 or whatever with a fucking no, no, sword no, no, no. I know is, I is more barbaric than having a trial, and then you know. Oh no, no, don't don't get me wrong. I could not. Don't get me wrong. Uh, to me, those things were. I walked around for a couple of years, worried that the next second I get my head chopped off. So I understand that it was that it was a horrible thing that they were employing. Yeah, but I do think that we have a ten. We kind you, you, of have a ten. What you're saying I, is, we if if a brown person does it, we call them savages. And if, that's the and, point. And if a white yes. person does it, we call it history. Right, and th- nothing could be more illustrative of this than. Uh, what's happened in the world? They had us, uh, uh, not us, but everybody. Well, we have to worry about, uh, you know, George W. Bush. I know you know this, but he they ruined the world. They destroyed this. They're why we're going through this now is specifically because of George W. Bush, and and George Bush Senior. 
my theory now is it's not a theory. They are the worst judges of people. They picked the worst people in the history of the country. Everybody they picked from Clarence Thomas to uh, to George W. Bush bringing in Rumsfeld again. Just the worst judge of people. Yeah. Or just liking evil people. You could say it. Yeah. And they're worse than Trump. Not worse than Trump, no. Not worse than Trump, but they're not that much better than him. Yeah, but like I, when you but think about, I, I, would, I would, I would certainly uh, draw a straighter line to Trump for what's going on in Ukraine than you know, as as, yeah. as, he, as he spent four years trying to dismantle. NATO I know, and discredit NATO and go, you know, this guy, this guy's a fucking genius. This guy over here, I'll be, I'll be tough with you on camera, but off camera, not so much. <laughs> literal quote. Well, literal quote. Right. Uh, and and isn't it amazing that all these people we see on TV now were all people who were testifying at this uh, the impeachment thing? Like, yeah, the same way after, people... the same way after OJ, it was all fucking those people, right? But it was like all these people were trying to warn us, like Vindman. All these people were trying to the, what this Trump guy was doing. Right. I mean, and now they're and, out of and, government, and, right? And on then, TV. <laughs> Yeah, and then all of a sudden, and then all these people who were arguing, I mean, I know, we know this bullshit, but all these people were arguing about the deep state, and I was like, and that, uh, they were, they were arguing even that, uh, tr uh, they made up the stuff about Trump with the Soviet Union, right? I mean, with Russia. But you can see him, he's like, he, he would do anything the Russians asked him to do when he was president. Yeah, he had a 100% man crush on Putin. So how could people be saying, oh, they, uh, some people saying like uh, like I'm talking about the New York Times and these out outlets are trying to say that he was targeted. That's part of what they're trying to say. Uh, sometimes that there was there was in other words like they, they're trying to say there was the the uh, what's the thing where the guy was uh, the dossier. They're going the dossier wasn't true. The dossier was true. They never said the thing about him having sex. They never knew that that was. True. They said the first day we don't have enough proof. To know that this is true, right? Right, but everything else in that dossier was true. I don't know. Mike, if, I don't know if that's the case, but a lot. No, of no, no. Was, I mean, in general, the yeah. general tenor of what he was doing. Yes, it was more true than not. More true than not, right? So, um, uh, I think that's it. I'm, I'm, I'm I, I think I've, I, I convinced you. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just figured out where, where my uh, problem is collapsing. Old Jew Medical Corner. Collapsing? Yeah. What's going if on? I, if I, well, it's been, I've been collapsing for about seven years on stage. Remember I told you I collapsed on stage? Yeah. I collapse sometimes when I'm walking. Do you still? What happened? I'll tell you what happens. What happens is, if I so say, let's say I twist my ankle, right? Uh huh. And then I start to go down, I cannot arrest. Any momentum from my knees down. In other words, it just goes boom. I huh. know that I should go to a doctor and tell him this. Probably more than me. Yeah. Yeah. Am I conveying it in any way that makes sense? Um. And then I'm going down. So so let's say you see me right, and I start to go down. There's nothing but the ground that's going to stop me or my hands. Right, but in a good situation, what would stop you? No, you'd have some kind of push up. You wouldn't collapse just by tripping. So you just lose bit. feeling in your lower extremities? That's what I think it is. Right. <laughs> That's not good, right? That's not good, no. Okay, so I think that, that my regular doctor said if this, we thought it was from lack of sleep, which I think it is from lack of sleep. Yeah. But then why would, from the knee down, would I just have no strength? Yeah, I don't know. Okay. If it's a tumor, you know, on, on the true crime shows, they always say, if anything happens to me. Well, all my problems are from the knee down, too, and I have back issues. So there's other explanations besides you're dying. True. <laughs> also, uh, in the Marcus Welby theory, this is like a slow brain tumor. You know what I mean? It's been, right. I started collapsing eight years ago. So maybe it's just a very slow march towards death. Right. Inefficient march <laughs> towards death. <laughs> but it is a cautionary tale that uh, what you have to worry about when you get up to my age is falling. How That's often, all you have to worry about. That's true. How often does this happen, though, on your daily walks? 
Oh, no, it's like once every few months. Okay, well, that's, uh, that, I mean, that's, you know. That's not to worry about. I wouldn't say no. that. I mean, it, you know, it, you started by saying when I twist my ankle. Yeah, because when I twist my ankle. Okay, so normally when I walk, I don't have that problem ever. Right. I'm walking and I'm, it's no problem. It's only when I lose my balance a little bit. And then I can't. To me, it seemed like I used to be able to push up. As I was going down, you could push up a little bit. Yeah, I don't quite. I, I'm having a hard time picturing what that is. I know, I know. <laughs> I, is there a course I could take? Something, you know, like the body, the human body. David Attenborough looks inside. Yeah, I think you need to just film yourself walking, and we'll that way we can. Okay, we, we can. can yeah, we yes. can zapruder any incident. Well, I definitely think that. Uh, I noticed this is with Susan. Like, Susan's more aware. She can say what's happening with her, and she can locate it. I I have a thing like, I don't know, I feel nervous, and my stomach hurts, and I'm, you know. I tend to not be able to identify. When I go to a doctor, I can't tell. I'm not good with the language of what's happening. Right. You know. But you can't go to the doctor with the uh, with a, with a uh, diagnosis. Doc. I've done my own work on this. Well, no, especially I tripped three months ago. <laughs> That's the thing. You have to be tripping when you go into the appointment. <laughs> no, I think what happens with me is that sounds more because that to me that sounds like more of a thing that happened rather than a thing that happens. That's right. That's right. Well, it was happening. I told you this on the show, though. This used to happen a lot. Uh, no, I, at the beginning of the show, it was happening a lot. And we, I flipped over. And I, yeah, I and flipped I, over, but. I was traveling then and going places too. You were traveling, you weren't <laughs> sleeping, and you were like you kept escalating your uh, your Prozac level too at the time. And no CPAP. And no I didn't CPAP. have a CPAP yeah. at the beginning. Yeah. Like when we started this thing, there was no CPAP. There was right? no CPAP. So Oh, we've I been through so many life changes here on the show. Well, I'm trying to get used to the fact that uh I don't you see like I don't sleep really that much and I'm thinking uh, beyond getting over uh, tragedies, maybe you're just not meant to sleep that much. After I think old men don't sleep that well. I kind of like it. Do you? Unless it hastens me towards my death. I've been I've been back and forth, especially since the surgery. I've had it's like good night, bad night kind of thing. But uh, I t I now try like now if I'm if I'm awake at three in the morning, having gone to bed at midnight, I'll get up for a while. I don't. I yeah. don't. I don't catastrophize it as much and lie there gnashing my teeth. You know, isn't that? And no, and that's part of like half the battle. Yeah, is the uh, ag. But you know, I, I noticed between my mom and dad, my dad could go to sleep every single night, and he loved. He loved to go to sleep. Yeah, and he went out like a light, and he was out the whole night. My dad was too, but he died at fifty-two, so I don't really know his old man uh, trajectory. Yeah. that's one of the problems he, of, he, of, of of an early death parent, as you can't track what happened to them right you know. my mother never slept well or did my mother was always troubled like when she woke up in the morning she had a horrible amount of anxiety yeah. every morning yeah. for her whole life that we interpreted as her being angry at us <laughs> if only she did her morning pages <laughs> you know it's so funny because in the last week i've this is the fourth reference i've heard to that julia cameron book yeah the artist way, which means it had to have been a pretty decent book that it had that much of an effect on. I think people. it did. It had a, I mean, I didn't read it, but Allison did, so I, I gleaned what what it was all about from that. But uh, but she she did, she, she did morning pages for a long time, and it was help, and she still does her own version of it now. I did morning pages for for a while uh, for a while too. I don't do them now, but it did it did I did find it was helpful. Yeah. And she, she was married to Martin Scorsese. I don't remember this. Jo Julia Cameron who was married to Martin Scorsese or something, or mixing up stories. Maybe it's Martin Balsam. We could be very close <laughs> to that. Do you, is there someone named Martin Balsam? There is. Yeah, I yeah. can see his yeah. face. How it's about the guy who played in the Defenders? Sort of Carl Malden-ish. Yeah. Carl Malden was a nice guy in that, uh, was it the Glass Menagerie? Or was it the... Uh, is this why I'm never called for those Leonard Malton type film buff things? <laughs> I'm not good at when 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 that Doug show, which we'll never get invited to again. Uh, you know what I was thinking about Doug Benson? I've known Doug Benson since 1989. Yeah, 
not that friendly. <laughs> <laughs> I used to think it was me, but now we're going to nine twenty twenty two. So if someone shows you who there are, believe 33 it. years you've had. Yes, yes. You've had oh, Jesus' lifespan to, to, to evaluate. That nice. <laughs> not a nice guy. Did what, you think he was... wasn't nice to me. It was not nice to me. Oh, did you see him as being really nice to me during that thing? He was a lot nicer, much, a lot nicer to you than nicer, me. Much nicer, right? <laughs> yes. Still felt like a cold fish. Yes, your existence was <laughs> at least acknowledged. That is a class day that I will never forget. I remember everything of that day. I went out to the car. I was in a, I was running late, which I always was back. And you have to admit, I've gotten better about running late, right? Yeah, sure. Do I have to admit it? Yeah. Okay. No, you don't have to admit it. But I it's admit true. it. I confess. I used to be two minutes late all the time. Now I'm like, oh, shut up. Who cares about this? All right. Uh, what were we talking about? Uh, the Doug Benson day. Oh yeah. So I go down there. And we're late. The, the guy's late for whatever the thing is. So I'm texting you. Have you told him? And you're like, just get. And then you. So I go downstairs. I'm late. I open up the door. And here's my image of what you. Of what happened. I open up the door and you went. What the fuck are you doing? No, no, That's not what you were no, doing. No, you were making know. a loud noise to let me know you're going to come and sit on my head down i was well i no, i i was still gesturing to you through the window to go around because i was there right. but there was like tinted what windows. an idiot yeah. so we were in an argument we we're in a fight and uh we weren't in a good mood to begin with right and so we get down to that studio i was in a perfectly good mood until you fucking showed up no 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 i'm not trying to claim like I <laughs> no you know what was, you know what started is the driver was really late that's what happened. Driver was late to pick me up, and then we went to your house, and you were even later. <laughs> That's how I, I was running up and down the stairs. Doesn't matter. I, I can't remember what all my excuses were. Yeah. So, um, but then we get there, and we go. You know what? We had a rough time, but we'll go into the warm womb of a Doug Benson show. You know, because he's like Johnny Carson. They say, you know, he wants you to do well. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and it was miserable, except. I loved the dabbing. I think that's the last time I dabbed. Yes. I dabble. I dabble a little in it. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> huh? Uh huh. Huh? Huh? Why not? Why not? I Why? say. Don't hang up on me yet. Yeah. I'll tell you. Oh, this is great. Now you're going to claim this is great. You can't pull any more monkey business. <laughs> My arguments are so weak. I'm not an alpha. I'll never so be an alpha. My hands? I know you can do it with your penis. This one's one of mine that, uh, that Tommy and Gruber actually wrote this intro for. <laughs> this improvised Separately intro. Separately from the song. But it kind of puts you in the mind of walking down a dusty Mexican street Juarez or Oaxaca. Or, it could be even Oaxaca. Or Oaxaca. <laughs> Tenochtitlan could be there. And you walk into a cantina. Open the double doors, look around at the tough, tough room. Peer up on stage and see a big, fat, sweaty Jewish guy. <laughs> and he plays this song. <laughs> All the problems that I see, this whole could possibly fade.
built a reputation as a horrible pain. Now it's sticking. You made a choice to be the way you are now. Try it again. Just start digging. Thank you very much. I have to check, look at my spittle before the show. That's right. You can't adjust your spittle during the show. It's true. So how are you I doing had, today? I good. I had something. I had something to start out with even today. Really? Oh, and, and I God. blew it by speaking. <laughs> mm -mm. I ruined it by thinking. I guess. Yeah. Oh yes. I. I was. Is this the reason why it's hard to remember? It's probably not a good thing. Uh. I. A Fiona Apple song. I'm not going to make fun of Fiona Apple, but I just don't want to know if you've heard it. I mean, I'd like to make fun of her, but I don't really have a solid angle on it. She's okay. Yeah. Kind of like her music. Right. Right. But she has this song, and it don't, I don't care how many times you, you kick me under the table. I won't shut up. No, I won't shut up. I don't care how many times you tell me to shut up, Josh Elvis Weinstein. Stein, I won't shut up. I'm not going to shut up. All right. I'm glad. I, I know you think it would be better <laughs> if maybe I on my part of the table wouldn't talk so much. But I'm telling you right now, I'm not going to shut up. I'm not going to shut up. The only thing I'm doing is I'm making it more melodic than it is. Right. Now, I don't have an objection to this kind of song, although oh, I do. It's a terrible song. When I was a kid, I couldn't wait till I got past. Bigger the bagger the bigger the bagger the boop boop ba doop ba doop boop. Got right? pa got past it in what context? Then you come up with a better melody, <laughs> like Karen, don't waste. I didn't say Karen. I don't care how much you think I should like you. I hate your guts. I oh, I hate your guts. You don't write songs like that. They don't write them like that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is way worse seeing you, I have to say. <laughs> oh, no, this is, this is way, way like worse. You're teaching me a voiceover <laughs> class, right? And I was trying to show you my new voiceover. <laughs> you can't blame it now on the fact that whether you can see me or not. I'm horrible either way. No, but it just adds another <laughs> another desperate dimension that really... <laughs> Because <laughs> you're, you're, I never actually thought you were playing to me before. <laughs> well, the thing is, well, I used to stage your house. Stage your house. Thank yeah, God that didn't happen right. for you, right? Yes. <laughs> uh, Josh, it would be better. I would prefer to sleep over so we could start right on time. <laughs> right. If we could do this podcast in a sort of exile on Main Street style. <laughs> well, I don't know what that means. I know the Stones had an album called Exile on Main Street. Yeah, they just they rented a big chateau that they all oh i was thinking that so similar to house at big pink no they that was just a house that they actually lived in for a while and, oh this is when recorded. when then yeah. they moved out of england to avoid taxes yes and they were in the riviera yes yeah, in the like south that. of france something like that yeah they were and they you know what they recorded they recorded it at mon dieu je vais à la salle shalom They'll go with Shalom at the end. I don't know why you're trying to do Hebrew. fake French thing. <laughs> I was the name of their studio in France. I used to have that problem when I was taking French in school that I would Hebrew would creep in because I had learned <laughs> Hebrew before French. Oh, I saw a movie that's in uh, Yiddish, and I didn't see the end of the movie, but I thought I actually thought I'll, it was an ex I'll tell excellent you, I'll, movie. Let me spoil for you. It ended with a question. <laughs> <laughs> it was called Sh the Shop on Main Street. Yeah. It was. Have you heard of it? I have not. It's a movie made in Czechoslovakia in 1965. Yeah. And they're talking, and there's a great movie. It's about, like, uh, the Nazis are taking over their part of Czechoslovakia. and, and the, But this was paid for with uh, with communist money in 1946. Yeah. It, just, it, was like ama it was, like, amazing to watch it because it's Yiddish and Yiddish and Slavic are the two languages. So I, I really do understand every seventh word. Yeah. Schwitz, you know. Right. Well, I guess it wasn't Schwitz. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody, I really do feel like 
that is my those are my people. Although one of the person, the lead looks exactly is a Slavic guy who looks like a young Craig Ferguson. Huh. That doesn't that doesn't play for me. Right? Right. <laughs> this is a guy. Here's my here's the, what you it's different when you can actually see me is that you can see the desperation. Right? That last <laughs> thing I said wasn't so terrible, was it? All right. Right. Right? Right. I see why you don't may ne- not necessarily want to see me. Yeah. You may not necessarily want to see me because you can distance yourself from me without seeing me. You can go. Exactly. <laughs> or you can do this, which is weird that you'd be making a cutoff sign to someone. I used to do a bit years ago about how, and now <laughs> it's totally obsolete because we're all on Zoom, but um, about how, you know, we all thought video phones would be here so fast. And it's just not happening. No one wants video phones, you know. <laughs> it's true, right? And what a couple of years and ago, talking about you know how you can't, you, know, you can no longer answer the phone when you're in the bathroom. You know, you can right. you can't make this gesture anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that was a jack off gesture for those of you on radio. Oh, that is it. That's true. That if I can see, but the other people can't see, you're back into that radio problem again. All right. You gave me a big lecture in the first show. I was doing a little show and tell on our very first podcast where right. I was uh, saying, look at my new toy, Josh. Isn't it cute? It's got a thing, and then it's got a little handle. Do you want to play with it? Look, you said, you stupid fucking Jew, which I thought was odd. Uh, weird, yeah. Why? <laughs> you said to me, I'm Jewish, but what you're doing is ridiculous. <laughs> I have to, but you? I asked me, you know what you used to do in the early shows that bothered me? You would kick me under the table and I wouldn't shut up. I would. Is that an anti song? Is she now the Marcel Duchamp of singers? Because <laughs> here's my fear, Josh. My fear is that. What is your fear, Andy? I would love to make an album. Uh-huh. If I made an album tomorrow, I know you're saying, you, you, you know, who better than you? You have a board. <laughs> right. I would be doing that one song I love, which is in G. Goes to C and goes to D. I write like eight, nine songs yeah. in that same vein. I'd be, it's the anthem. Tom Petty did it for fucking 35 years. <laughs> it's fine. And it would be like an anthem. Bam, 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 bam. That sounds terrible. That was bad, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was not inspired to anthemic heights with that. Right. No, it wasn't very good. I forgot the topic now. I tried to make was- a new sting last night and it was terrible. It was like I was a tone deaf animal. <laughs> Isn't that weird, Bill? Because you got into it like you took it to, to it like a duck on a thing, yeah. and you were like, boom, boom, boom. You were loving it. We need some new sting blood. I decided, and I so I, uh, I set up, and I and I had I had a good idea for one, but I just I I was just like a like I said like a tone deaf animal. I just could not uh, lock it in last night. Well, the the other I, here could be an idea for a song. I was watching TV the other night, and I was thinking to myself, I like TV. I- Ooh, but I don't like the commercials. I like TV. Ow, 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 ow. Is that the way it goes? Ow, 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 ow. It's the, you have the esprit of it. Decor? No. Oh, just the esprit? <laughs> <laughs> you know what esprit decor means? Esprit of the core. Thank you. Bum, 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 bum. I like kind of a, a general haunting a uh, drum beat, like a, r- a drum roll behind you. Boom, boom, boom. Instead of like, it's like, boom, 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 boom. it's like it's going to be getting funnier. All right. Hey, Josh, I walked by your house last night. Boom, 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 boom. And you asked me a question. Boom, 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 boom. So what boom, happened? Boom. I kind of like boom, 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 went to the window. Boom, 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 boom. Really? And I started to creepily boom, 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 look boom, into the lower boom, window. Boom, 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 boom. boom. Boom, boom, boom. I heard my dogs barking. Boom, boom, yeah, boom, yeah. Boom, I said, "Is this boom, appropriate?" Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> and then I yelled, Fuck "Alice!" Ouch. Yes, he knocked all his gear on the floor. Sorry about that. That's okay, boy. What'd, what'd you hit? The recorder uh, fell to the floor and ripped my earphones from my, from oh my, my earbuds God. from my ear violently. I'm so sorry. I That's think it was right. the song, probably. I think that. it was. It wanted. Is, to, is this still it, working? I, I think the recorder tried to commit suicide there. But we're still going, you think? Yeah, we're still going. Wow. Nothing can nothing can stop us. Wouldn't you think the universe would go, hey, fellas, I'll knock you offline today. You can start tomorrow. Fresh as a daisy. 
Yes, but luckily I did actually have a sting for that. For, oh. no, for knocking all my shit on the floor. Okay, he's going to be like this. Uh, I, I don't do stings. No, it's a real sting. I actually have a sting for it. <laughs> oh, I thought you were kidding. No. I, thought you were, I thought when you were kidding, hey, it's very quiet today in the neighborhood. I was because, exactly the opposite is true in my neck of the woods. Oh, well, then I, there we're not a, as close as I thought. There was a I concerning thought. amount of noise, actually. And so the only the, the noise that would have to be there that I wouldn't be able to hear would be the various uh, cutting of the uh, bushes and stuff, right? Did you hear the alarm going off at the uh, grocery store the other day? For, uh... No, no, I didn't hear that. Yeah. Wow. I, at Vons? At Vons, yeah. Oh, no, I don't mean Vons. It's just to say it is a Vons. Yeah, sure. <laughs> As I was leaving, this this piercing alarm goes off with flashing lights in the parking structure, and like I heard it a full block away, like farther away from from <laughs> there than you are. Well, there's a part on the street where if you go up towards the main street, there needs to be a stoplight there. There's never going to be a stoplight there because it would be it would cause a backup of people making a left. Oh, a stoplight in to go into the grocery store, you mean? Yes, yes, because people are I would here's the problem. I think it's dangerous. Josh, I mean, let, hear me out. Josh, Josh, I'm not even saying a rolling a rolling yield would be good. Josh, hear me out. It's more interesting the, the self driving cars will stop anyway. <laughs> Who sleeps like that? Who could sleep? Are you drowning in your own in your own, what would you? <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> the temptation to do a visual gag is strong, and that's not, that's not good. <laughs> that one always gets me. Hey, Mo! Hey, Mo! <laughs> See, when I was a kid, I wanted relief from people hitting each other in the head. I didn't go to the TV and go, oh, I hope they're, I hope they're putting something in someone's eye socket. Yeah. Because I was such a sensitive boy. I was a nonviolent kid. <laughs> I had my own in-house Mo. <laughs> Did you, but I didn't talk. I did it again. <laughs> yes, he knocked all his gear on the floor. <laughs> why? Why does it come off the table? I don't know why uh, this mic cord is uh, acting like it's shorter than usual today. <laughs> <laughs> That's got to be very annoying. <laughs> it really all right. You know, I used to walk around the house a lot with a uh, headset on, with various types. Of um, like I, I would have like a, sometimes I would have a, a oh I know what I used to have the the Apple things that go in your ears that are corded yes. before okay so I would walk around the house with those on and those would just like catch on every drawer right uh, and you know I thought it was a, and, and again I w it wasn't a funny thing like a Jim Car Carrey movie I just would annoyingly pull it out yeah it's not good. See the difference between Josh, and I'll tell you the people the difference between Josh and me. Josh is kind of looking at the equipment, making sure everything's okay, but also able to hear what I said. I, that's it. I couldn't do that. That's why I'm not, again, that's why I'm not Sully Sullenberger. All right. I can't multitask. And it's not even multitasking. It's like, I'll do this, and now I'll go over here. I'll go, no, what's happening over there? It's probably a problem. Yeah, because I just have the one voice in my head. Is it, okay, here's my here's my impression of your negative voice. You ready? Yeah. Oh, you you knocked this thing over. You knocked it over, stupid. I don't know. You don't have that. What do you give me an example? No, of I, you, I do one quick fucking idiot and move on. Oh, I see. Right, yeah. right. The reason why that's not bad is you go fucking idiot. Then you don't stop and go. Should I really be calling myself a fucking idiot? No, you don't go through that because you know you have a uh, a healthy relationship between your parent voice and you. Yes. No, my parent my parent voice is nicer to me than my internal voice for sure. Oh, well, that has to be. It. <laughs> <laughs> you 
No, my pa- my voice uh, can't be worse than my. No, I think that all the bad voices in me came from my parents. Yeah, this is what came from my parents. Oh, great! Now this is going to happen all day long, every day. I have that from my mom, but it's more of a, uh, a an outward thing. The ex- oh, okay. the expectation that things will go to shit, I definitely get from my mom. <laughs> And but we, uh, the mitigating factor from my dad is, okay, if it goes to shit, you'll handle it. That's good. That is very nice. This is, this is why I say you had a perfect upbringing. God, God, God love me. I'm lucky to have gotten out here from the East Coast in one piece. Yeah. Knowing nothing about cars, women, or making a career in music. <laughs> nobody I've knows. Had that but nobody California. knows that, though. What's that? Nobody knows that, though. <laughs> What do you mean they don't know that? I mean, nobody goes into a career in music knowing how to have a career in music. No, no, it didn't seem. Uh, no, in other words, like I didn't think to myself there is a glut of singer songwriter. Actually, I did think of that. Yeah, I thought there you was. You had to know uh, that if you're going to L.A., it was the big time. Well, not only that, it was going to L.A. and knowing that I told myself I should be a studio musician. Uh, as a result of hating the violin and not wanting to practice and realizing that I wanted to be better at the guitar, but the only way to have been better at the guitar would be to have been to come out here, go to Dick Grove Music Workshops, which I did, or, but it wasn't Berkeley, but it was okay, but I didn't want to practice. So I wasn't going to be the best studio guitarist in L.A. No. Or even, a stu- it, or even a studio guitarist. That's the thing. <laughs> right? I fancy Every myself Every studio as, guitarist practices. Yes. Like, I fancied myself. Like, see, I didn't fancy myself this way. That would be a lie. I thought, of course you're not as good as these people. Right. Because that, that I got that kind of reinforcement. Of course you're not. How could you think? And because I was, I started to be a, for one and a half days, I was a prodigy in the violin. And then uh, I hated everything about it. Yeah. So... I, I have very horrible, but I don't have that attitude anymore about my voice or anything. Now I'm just lazy is why I'm not it's doing it. It's better. <laughs> it's better. No, I'm going to you wait till you hear the music I come out with. Oh, my God. I'm just going to do the music just to please you. Oh, good. <laughs> That's the best. So half the length of your normal tracks. <laughs> <laughs> I sent Zach one of my songs, one of my songs once. That was the longer version. Yeah. Galifianakis. And that was a bad idea. <laughs> and I even said to him, how come he never reacted? He goes, what do you want me to say? <laughs> it was the name. It was, I think it was the long version of the neighbor. No, it was the long version of nice. Like me. Yeah. This is about 12, 13 minutes. It's long. It's long. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, you'd a- get, you'd get more play on the show. If you had shorter tracks. <laughs> Okay, good to know. <laughs> See, I, I need that kind of guy when I submit. When I submit. Yes, yes. There's a difference between your being the Grateful Dead and your defying uh, broadcast standards by making a 10 minute song. There's a difference between you being the Grateful Dead and the audience being the Grateful Dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but when they did a lot, what, what was the longest song that. A big popular song. How long was it? Was it when they first came on the radio? Like not, like like a Rolling Stone, maybe, or I don't even know how Pro, long. I was don't it? know. American Pie was a classic. Uh, DJ yeah. needs a dump song. <laughs> <laughs> not laughing at your bathroom humor. I know. Refuse. Stairway to Heaven is a stairway to men's room. <laughs> <laughs> and the Grateful Dead did do a a drum thing, but we, that wasn't as hacky as you would think, because that we knew it was coming. But all of their singles, quote unquote, were all radio length for the most part. And they were, yeah, and they were radio hits. A lot of the singles, not many, Truckin'. not many. Tr- Trucking, yeah. Uh, above, above a touch of gray, that's a hit. Touch Blah, of gray was their biggest bo- hit. Uh, and then there's also Truckin'. Did I say Truckin'? No, no. Truckin' <laughs> got my chip. Keep not saying it. It's a hit. <laughs> Hey, can you sing down by the riverside where your voice is not audible? I had heard probably as a kid, uh, trucking, and I had heard Uncle John's band probably. Uncle John's band is a hit. Yeah, everything on that album is a hit. If you by, by hit, I mean oh, an incredibly great song that doesn't go on five hours. They're all great songs on American Beauty and uh, Uncle John's 
No, Working Man's Dead. Oh. Perfect albums. All right, stop me. What Just about, say, well, how do you feel about Terrapin Station? I don't think it's that great, Terrapin Station. Yeah. Terrapin, boop, 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 boop. Terrapin but, Station! <laughs> Terrapin <Pin> Tribe! <laughs> no, but they have Mars Hotel. Uh, they have Europe 72. They have about seven or eight amazing yeah. albums. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I would get them. I still love all of the uh, bootlegs, but that's not meant for, for that's meant for your alone time, not meant not my alone time, baby. <laughs> you didn't even like fish. <sighs> it's time for questions. What do you want to know? We love your questions so much. It's half our show. Do, 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 do. Half our show. Do you think Yakov Smirnoff is should go out there and go? I was, I warned you first. I was early on this, early adopter. In Russia, they target civilian, and you. In the United States, so you are not good at multitasking. I see that your concentration is on trying to find the thing on your phone. And now you're half-heartedly doing Yakov Smirnoff. And Yakov it, takes your full attention. In the United States, Cheney causes illegal war in Iraq. In Ru Russia, Putin just starts killing civilians. It's crazy. What a country. <laughs> no, no, it's crazy is my new one. Oh, okay. Not what a country. I, I have my own take on it. It's what... It, Pickle says... Listening in America, to... weapons of mass destruction lie about Cheney. Eh, that's right. I keep forgetting to do the reverse. Yes. In Russia, government screws you up the ass. No. In America, no, that's not the people. <laughs> <laughs> in America, some of my friends like anal sex, fucking each other up the ass. In Russia, only the government gets to fuck you up the ass if you by this analogy. <laughs> but my bathroom humor is taboo. It really is, because I'm taking it to a different level. What I'm doing, Josh, which I don't think you quite understand, I'm making it so bad, it's worse, and then it's good. Ah, so you're kindlerizing it. I'm kindlerizing <laughs> You. It was your mistake. You didn't have to tell me. You never had to tell me, oh, I love the way you keep going on forever and ever, and then you always make it funny. And then I wouldn't stop any bit. After yeah, that was that. back when I wanted to encourage you. <laughs> Be Are you saying the bloom is off the podcast, Rose? It is. Okay. And the Pickle liquid. says, looking back on the first few shows and I'm left asking questions like, can it be that it was all so simple then? Or, sounds familiar to me, huh. or has time rewritten every line? Huh. If we had the chance to do it all again, tell me, Josh, would we? Also, could we? Huh. I love that song, by the way. Do you? The way we were. Yeah, I love that. I remember loving Started that movie. Pictures of the smile. I'm adding more vibrato. Of the smile. I'm trying to get more of an Elvis Costello. How does he do the vibrato? How does he do the vibrato? He does have like a little vibrato. He gets going. He does. Everywhere. He does, especially yeah. once he took uh, once he got took those singing lessons before Juliet letters too. Especially, yeah. Oh, he did take singing lessons. I liked yeah. his voice before that, but let's not get into that because you know how I am. So uh, I always ask myself as I'm teaching myself to sing: Should I add vibrato? It never sounds good. No, you should never consciously do anything. <laughs> good point. That's a good point. Solid. Christopher Seymour. Says, uh, do you think part of the blowback to John Lennon's "We're Bigger Than Jesus" interview was due to the fact that Lennon was punching down? <laughs> Jesus <laughs> seemed like a really nice guy, and it sounds like Lennon Slam just came out of nowhere. <laughs> he was punching. Well, is, that, is, <laughs> is that punching down exactly, or it's funny punching up? <laughs> it's funny, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I never thought about that. Well. I think John I don't think it, I don't think it was really aimed at Jesus. It was just like him saying, "You know how fun, you know how big we are? Think about it, assholes." 
I'm, I'm not trying to portray what happened there. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, but you know, you could. It's funny now because you could never get in trouble by saying something like that now. Sure, you but could. you could get you, what? Sure, you could. You think so? Sure. Yeah, that's true. Even if Marilyn Manson says it, that Marilyn Manson is turning out to be not such a good fella. Less than stellar. Less than stellar person. Oh, my God. But here's the thing. I don't have to go, oh, my God, now I have to stop loving his music. Right. Finally. You got one. <laughs> you got a free pass on one. Yeah. Not my. It's not. That's not my thing. Dan Wade says, hi, Dan Wade. Happy semi-quincentennial episode, folks. Happy semi-quint... 250? Correct. All right. You can tell you by the hashtag think? 250. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That helped. <laughs> no, but I'm making it like I'm a genius. Hmm, hmm. What could it be? What number is that? <laughs> hmm, hmm. Is it 230? Let me scan my Latin. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Let me pretend to be bright. What do you guys think of Tom Waits? Seems like folks either love him or hate him. Incidentally, Mrs. Wade calls him Tom Waits... What? I have mixed feelings about Tom Waits. My no, wife likes him. No, more folks than either me. love him or hate him. You do not have mixed feelings. <laughs> it says it right there. I like that one. I drank myself into a sock. I had the world in a sock one night. Something like that. The I had too piano much. Piano has been drinking. That's the one. That's the, the piano has been drinking. The piano has been drinking. <laughs> Not me. Right. Not I think he. Me. I think he's excellent, Tom Waits, but I don't know much about him, really. Uh, he's another one of those guys I love who I don't listen to. <laughs> he's the guy you love to not listen to. That's right. I had a piano. <sighs> Jason Ooh, Karate Man Parton says, uh, Thanks for the well wishes from last week. The face holes are doing fine. Good. I'm glad. Jason had some things removed last week, Andy. How come? Should I have known that? Yeah. Yeah, you should. Oh. I'm, okay. So then, oh, they're not cancerous then. They're not malignant or something. Uh, they were precancerous. Right. But he got them out. Yes. Boy, I'm sure not. Josh, hope that. the back <laughs> thing. I'm going to continue with this. Uh, Josh, hope the back thing comes out. Mine took a while, but it eventually worked itself out. That's good. Andy, thanks for the shoe recommendation a couple weeks ago. Happy TS250, all y'all. Oh, that's cool. That means it was probably ASICs, because those are the only ones I ever recommend, because yeah. I, I like them. Sure. But you don't have to have them. No. The amazing... I thought you'd be more of a Jew balance man. Whoa. Wait a second. That sounded like a uh, like a, an anti-Semitic slur. No, it was what you. It was a what shoe you, pun. What you wearing there? Jew balance. Oh God, are you okay? Are you angry, sir? Absolutely not. I like a Jew. Okay, I don't know why. I seem to go downhill very fast, right? Downhill faster than huh. M. The great M. Ledsom says, "Congratulations on reaching two fifty, guys. You make my Tuesday." Much love. I just liked it during the show, and people say I can't multitask. Thank you, M. I just realized. No, does it come out on Tuesday? No, oh, it comes out on Monday. She doesn't get to it. Tuesday, Tuesday is Thought Spiral Day for M. Right. I I was thinking it's not like she lives in Australia. It's not like that. That's five years, Andy. What? That I knew she lived in London. No, five years what? we've been doing this fucking show. I can't believe that. That is very. That is. Very surprising to me because I see these shows on the and they're like five seasons and we have a total of twenty three shows. Cry me a river, I right. say. Five. <laughs> That's a lot of shows. And it was cold, had it rained, so I felt like an actor, and I thought of Ma, and I wanted to go back there. Your race, your rage, the way that you talk, I'll kiss you, you're beautiful, I want you to walk. We got five years, what a surprise, five years. Sorry. What a great song, I, I, I can't, who is it? David Bowie from Ziggy Stardust. Famous oh. album, real famous album. I, well, I know that. I should have gotten it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not proud of it. Was my impression me. that fucking off? Come on. No, no, the impression was good. If you do anything from Hunky Dory, I can 
I, I would know it immediately. And I know all uh, the rest of the boys up, but not as well as I know Hunky Dory and the one where what's the one where he's got the is it low or something where he got his hand in front of his face. I don't, I don't know, know, but you keep doing that weird karate chop. I keep doing that weird thing, and I also feel guilty that I didn't know the song you were singing, because I could kind of get it. All right. So I just feel like I'm less than, and you're more than. Time takes a cigarette, puts it in your mouth. <laughs> That's the, his name was Davy Jones? Uh, it was initially, yes. Yeah. I don't think it was Davy, necessarily. But... <laughs> why would I say Dave? Oh, <laughs> like I mixed him up with the monkeys guy. Well, that's why he became David Bowie. Oh, because of the monkeys? Because of Davy Jones, yeah. That's unbelievable when you think about that. But Bowie is a great name. He should have gone with D. Elvis Jones. <laughs> I think it would have been slightly early to, do, to go that route. But Elvis Mitchell went there. That's true. Huh? Yeah. Huh? What? Can I ask you a stupid question? Was El- uh, Were there never an Elvis before Elvis, or was it a name from the South? I'm sure there were other Elvises. I can't remember anything before him. Well, there weren't other famous Elvises. <laughs> yeah, but it's not like a name like John, Roger, Elvis. No, it's not. But <laughs> well, who were the famous buddies before Buddy Holly? Yeah, but yeah, but I I'd like to go yammering on like a fucking idiot more. Can I do that? Sure. Yeah, but why? For five years. Five years doing the same bits. Sorry. Stephen Elton Yates. Steve, 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 Elton, Elton. That's not the song, is it? Elton, 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 Yates, 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 Stephen Elton Yates. Congrats to the Thought Spiral Podcast. I'm making it to Test Show 250. I've enjoyed them all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. We couldn't have done it without you. I really don't think we could have done it without you. Now, I'm supposed to say another name that we could have done it with. All right. Eastside 76 says, you know, I didn't realize that 250 will be uh, listening this kind of response of some kind of a milestone. I think it's more a desperate need for a highlight of some sort. <laughs> wow, 250. It's impressive till you realize you're not at the halfway point. <laughs> That's Eastside 76. Hashtag row to 1000. Wow. I don't know about that. We may make it, we may make it there. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Would that be 20 years? Yes. <laughs> It'd be 20 years, right, Josh? Yeah. <laughs> Think of all the money you haven't made. Think of all the opportunities you turned down. Oh it's okay, God. buddy. No. You could have another career after this. There's no time. So little Aw, time. come on. It's not worth crying over. So time. Duckman says, here's a free Ricky Gervais impression. Lean in and with a smile, condescendingly address someone like you're talking to a little kid and say, this is your idea of comedy, isn't it? Really hard. <laughs> Go really hard on the isn't it. Lean in. Uh, this is your idea of comedy, isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> he definitely captures everything that's disgusting about the guy. That's who he is. I get, he, no, Ricky's face is really heavy on you like that Jonathan, amazing Jonathan character he used to do about the, didn't he used to do the punk rock magician? I've angered you and you, he goes, I've made you upset and you don't like that. I don't recall that, but but uh, that's the way Ricky Gervais is. Uh, he's like, sorry, the big uh, hard, the, sorry, the controversial stuffs are coming, right? Is that his other thing? <laughs> right. You can never make somebody laugh when you go. Wait till I get there. I'm gonna really. Right. I'm taking the cover off this year. You think that one bothered you? <laughs> I see. That's a mistake I would never make is the setting myself up for failure like that. Yeah, well. I'm going to be, how are you going to do this year? Really? You would never set yourself up for failure? (laughs) No, no, but that not in that specific (laughs) way. Mom, I'm moving to L.A. to be a guitar player. (laughs) Ma! (laughs) Ma! What are you talking like that for? Forget about it, Ma! Ma, it's a dream! One day I'm going to shake the dust of this town and see the world! 
and then and then I'll come up with my own songs, and then they'll be great songs, and I'll make a million dollars. By the way, there is totally an actual preschool Shark Tank on Netflix now. There's a show where these two sort of inventor guys get pitches for inventions from little kids That's and so then try funny. to make them. And it's literally a preschool shock tag. Get the house to fly. And, and then it's the people. I'm so, I'm furious about this. <laughs> and then, so now what is your solution for nuclear waste leaking? I think you get all the nuclear waste. Like a big giant nuclear garbage bag. And then you fling it into space on a garbage rocket. A new how much you need for this? I need a million to dollars! Please go something! You know what Susan brought home the other day, the other week? With, huh? She brought home, she ordered them, but they didn't bring them, them home. They, they brought us a different, we ordered groceries, but they didn't bring us the God, God, God. I, I was looking forward to it too, but I, I don't think they hit the stores yet. Uh, I don't know. Or maybe they've already hit the stores. You know, there's there's a there's a bountiful real season, and then there's the you know the Chilean. You know. Ah <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, great idea, great idea, Schmeckneck. You're gonna order uh, melon in uh, December. You're gonna get them from Chile. Chile. I can't do voices anymore. I don't know, but you came up with Schmeckneck. Schmeckneck. <laughs> but, for example, I've been trying this all week. Niet. Niet. Wah. I know they do a thing where they go. <laughs> People who do it, do it so quickly. I know I could do it. I'm just stupid. You are very stupid, comrade. Yes. <laughs> you are very. You do, do a couple sentences. You are not a smart man. You are very much like most Americans. Not very you're smart. Very, you're very much like most Americans. You're very smart. Not so good. That's not very good at all. Not very good at all. Not very good at all. Who am I? A German guy? I think I can only do German guy. Speaking Schweinhund. of the Germans, I saw the movie The African Queen last night. Oh, really? And what did you think? For the very first time. I thought it No, was, that's not true. I thought it was pretty good. Not the greatest. I've seen it 12 times, and I just thought it was the greatest, but I have got tired of it. Yeah. <laughs> Leeches! Get the goddamn leeches off me, Kate. That scene's the best. Yeah. When he says, get, get the goddamn leeches off me, Kate. Yeah, something like that. Do you remember that scene? Yes, I do. I just, okay, but just you're not saw gonna, last it night, didn't, in fact. Yes. It didn't impress you or something? What do you say? <laughs> the leeches, Kate. Look, Kate. I may be 400 years older than you, but you love me, Kate. Well, actually, they were a good couple. Well, he was. Uh, I see. I didn't. So that was the sort of missing link for me, is I didn't really necessarily feel any real chemistry between them. No, oh, oh, between them and oh, right. But don't you think it's the time period of the movies? It's like you didn't feel any chemistry when you heard uh, uh, Al Jolson go. Mah! Wasn't it the general tenor? No. But Not I mean, really. like you know, Bogart and uh, Tracy. I mean, uh, Hepburn and Tracy truly did have you know like measurable chemistry between one another. And also, because they were fucking. No, but also, Faye, who's the other lady? What other lady? What was the lady you just said? Uh, Catherine Hepburn? No, no, that's not the lady who he had the sex with all the time. That the sex that, that Spencer Tracy did? Uh, mixing it up, but didn't. Have to, oh, Spencer Tracy. Bogart and Bacall. I, Bogart and Bacall. Right, right. But so that's the thing. Do you see? You know what to do with your lips, Bobby. Just put them together in a sexual way and blow it like you're sucking a thing, Bobby. Is that the way it was? On my wedding night. You know how to use you know how to use a whistle, Bobby. I I can do May West. Just put it on a lanyard. <laughs> that was so weird though, when I didn't realize you were talking about Spencer Tracy. Yeah. But I don't see Spencer Tracy as a, one of the sexiest men of the uh, film era either, right? Well, I don't see Catherine Hepburn as one of the sexiest women. Oh, I did when I was. I thought she was very pretty when, I, but I also thought Julie Andrews was attractive, but not that much, really. Huh? Tell me more. <laughs> oh, I would. I would. 
about you know, your mid sixties spank not- bank. <laughs> a spank bank. A spank bank. All right, let me get back to the questions, Josh. Right. It can't all be fun. I almost just took the thing down for a third time, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's Kindler territory. Kindler territory is when you can't learn how to avoid the thing. Yes. <laughs> I just don't understand why the thing that has worked for a hundred episodes right now is causing me all this trouble. Uh, I, I think when you're done, you're going to see that it's hooked through your sweatshirt or something. Yeah, that's, that's what it is. <laughs> what is that big guy? What's that like? It looks like you could fly behind your he- head. It looks like a, a, a... Oh, I know what it is. It is from Toy Story. What are you talking about? On the top shelf? Be- uh, behind you? Uh, hold of on. the bookcase? That? That's Tom, Toy Story. That's Tom Servo. Dipshit. From Toy Story, right? No. Stop <laughs> surfing. Sort of dipshit. Not even a friendly dipshit. No. Not even like, oh, dipshit, you old... I'm known for one thing, Andy. One fucking thing. <laughs> From 30 fucking years ago. Hey. I think you should... Uh, you know what? I refuse to do the sous vide question. All right. <laughs> Let me look at what it is. Then. Uh, sous vide says... Uh, Uh, Do you ever regret not having biological children? (laughs) That's nice how he included me in that, too. Yeah, how do you know that? You've had biological. I don't know what you've had, really. But but, um, I do know what you have. No, I don't regret. I would regret. I don't regret because I really think that the uh, how badly I was uh, with OCD would have it would have not been a good move. But if if I had done it, they would have been the greatest kids ever. Uh, yeah, it might have hurt your 14-hour-a-night sleeping schedule, though. I don't think I could have done it. I'd be worried. I wouldn't let them go anywhere. I would be so worried all the time. They, they would hate me Yeah. by the time they were 18 or earlier. Uh, and I and I don't know. I mean, I, I, I definitely feel like uh, my stepson is my kid, and... Uh, yeah. I you know I think there's another there's another alternate universe where we certainly could have had biological children, but I don't. It's not a regret. But we probably would say, Sue V, don't ans- don't ask that question when you're over at the Weinstein's, eating with the non biological children. Ah uh, well, there there will always be one biological parent here for the for the kid. So. <laughs> no, they're talking about me and you, yeah. not not oh, okay. not uh, it's, uh, me and you. Have we ever? And I'm saying. That we should say it's a rude question. Uh, I can't choose between my kids. I'm like Hart. My songs are my children. Gary Hart. <laughs> no, no, no. Hart, the group. Oh, oh. And what was the name of his? Uh, I swear to God, I'm not. Ki- I'm not messing around with women. And you can even check me when I'm on my boat affairs all day. Monkey business was his boat. I <laughs> Monkey business. <laughs> What the, he did not want to. That's a guy who did not want to be president. It he appears to take that's the case. Down. Yes, that is, that is Kindler level, level self sabotage. Yeah. No, Kindler. I don't think Kindler would have ever. There's be ever chance I would be running for a high office. That's ever. true. That's true. Wouldn't make that mistake. Maybe I'm a not SAG, that. SAG president. Seth Dick the Third says. Seth Dick the Third says. Mama Dick the Third has this question for Andy, Josh, James Mason. And Andy as Putin. You haven't eaten in 36 hours. I hand you each a bucket of fried chicken. What piece do you take first? Incidentally, Mama Dick the Third is off pot while she waits on a test for a new job. Interesting. Do you feel better, Seth, making up more fake things about your non-existent mother? Why don't you, you, I'm starting to think. He's, he's out on your pro- trail, Seth Dick. He's out on your trail. <laughs> I don't know. I think he's approaching a Anthony Perkins style. Yeah. Thing yeah. here. Hmm. Uh, okay, so who would I do it as? Putin. Oh, what piece do uh, Putin? You've been working on your Putin all week, you said. With your, Put- no, with uh, your da. Da. Yet. What piece do I take? I take all the pieces. I'm Vladimir. I'm Vladimir. <laughs> What's my problem? I don't do a good Russian accent. Please pass me an extra crispy drumstick. That's what I would like to start with, and then I'll move into a breast. I'd like white meat. Can I have more white meat? That's not what I heard. Oh my God! This is this could be. The... <laughs> but you know what? 
I think that you have to give us credit on this one because we're trying to help. I'm trying, reaching out to the listeners. I'm trying to fulfill the request. You're doing some <laughs> sort of weird abstraction of Putin. I really starting to feel. I really starting to feel like by this time I should be able to identify a voice, and I ha- I have five voices I can do: New York, Er, Southern guy. And so I need to be able to establish that you I have can't some even kind name of- five voices. <laughs> <laughs> Drunk Irishman. Who be hoody goody? Who to be goody? Shirley be goody. Yes, Shirley be goody. Yes, <laughs> I spent a week with Shirley be goody once on the Isle of Man. I heard you had that in the Navy once. It started out as a rash and it spread all over. It seems you use this Navy thing for so many punchlines. <laughs> for before I got into this racket, it was my only punchline. I just couldn't get enough of it. I had that in the Navy once. Do you want to say what? Do you want to read Larry Harold's question? Larry Harold says, "When you say haven't eaten, you're not counting bagels, right?" That's a solid point. If I could get away with it, but I can't get away with it anymore because I do don't think it's a good uh, diabetes thing. I have type two diabetes. I have it. Oh yeah. Got it. Back away from the Jew roll. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. I agree. I, agree. Uh, I used to eat, used to eat like four bagels in the morning. I mean, as soon as I got them, if I got the bagels, I ate three that day. Yeah, this doesn't work that way. That's anymore. not a good way to live. <laughs> uh, Richard Cole says the art gallery at the University of Guelph has this new sculpture installed in his front yard. What do you think? I'm not a professional critic, but I like it. I will describe what it is. Oh, it is very cool. It's like a, a generic... Um, it appears to be a stone living room with two chairs, a couch, and a large television. I like that sculpture. And the second one is uh, it being is it, viewed from a different... It is a different angle, yes. Yes, I think it's excellent sculpture. I believe it to be a brutalist rendering of the American dream laid out. (laughs) Where is Guelph? Is that in Canada? Uh, I don't know. Guelph, University of Guelph. But, Richard, you are correct that it's outstanding. Or maybe I'm overselling it, but I like it. Or outside standing, at least. Oh, my God. James Mason, he hangs around for a while. He gets very corny almost. I've felt very lonely lately. I thought I'd come get some company. <laughs> you got to get out more, James. Isai76 says, as the official Mexican of Thought Spire, I wish you would make no you more beaner jokes. Doing it's James Mason. Oh, you're going to do it as James Mason. Wait, wait, what's your point? I Oh, maybe you didn't know that you're still sounding like James Mason. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll stop now. Try it again. Esai76 says, as the official Mexican of Thought Spiral, I will make no more Beaner jokes. It's now Bina without the hard R. Hold up. Did you just say it? Say what? He tried to trick me. Into what? Into saying that word. What word? Oh, there's the door. Oh, thank God we were stopped from continuing that bit. All right. I think we can move on now. Tom, 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 the Tom Tom says, I played Josh singing the Purim song for my Jewish wife. She lit up. (laughs) She spent the rest of the night singing it. You have brought a tiny bit of joy to her, like I did on my wedding night. Sorry. Really sorry about that. I'm going to like it, too. I'm very glad I lit up your your wife. (laughs) It sounds (laughs) weird. Yeah, don't even repeat what he said, even though he said it. And don't to- say it slowly. I'm very happy that I was able to light up your life. Hmm. 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 Oh. Uh, J. Anus Films? Get it? Yeah, I do. Saw so, uh, The Aviator. I think Howard Hughes coined the phrase, good evening, ladies and germs. <laughs> and loved Kate Blanchett as Catherine Hepburn. Josh, what old Hollywood person could Andy portray to acclaim? Andy, same question for you, but for Josh. 
Um, very confusing question. And you could probably do Jolson. Ah. See? And uh, maybe uh, Peter Lorre we could get him in as. Is that for me or you? I'm trying to think of the, of classic Hollywood people you could play. Maybe Kelly. I don't know, but the same, Kelly, same question. Kelly's but- Heroes era, uh, Don Rickles maybe. Hey. Hey, yeah, yeah. You know what? I just decided, and I may be wrong about this, but I'm not good at impressions. <laughs> what? Let's shut this. I'm starting down, to get the feeling Let's from the show. Let's shut the show down then. <laughs> but they want you. He wants you to do uh, one yourself too. No, he doesn't. Same question for you, Andy. Same question, Andy. Oh, I see. But then, Andy, same question. But oh, what do I think that Josh? <sighs> I can't. I can't focus on that. I think. I think you could play. I don't understand the question. You do all the all the Hollywood. It's voices. not impression. It's asking who could I play. Like he's saying, like in the Aviator, where Kate Blanchett played Catherine Hepburn. Right. What classic Hollywood person could you play? Oh, oh! I was thinking about just impressions. Yeah. No acting. Okay, so Josh, I think would be try the acting, perfect- dear boy. <laughs> I think Josh would have been a natural kind of a Walton, Walter Brenner type thing. Hmm. Right? Sure. I, I don't know the question anymore. Right. I'm just hanging on. All right. Can you do him now? Walter Brennan? Walter Brennan? No. <laughs> Are we down to the last question? We're down to the last question. Chaotic Neutral wonders, hey, guys, so Foxworthy is trending. Because of his old man yelling at the clouds, Netflix special. Is that true? I never really liked the blue collar comedy guys, but Ryan White seems like he would be fun to hang out with. Any tater salad stories? Thanks and happy 250. I don't know why Foxworthy's trending. I think he was just on Mar- a Marin show. No, he has a Netflix special. That's why he has a new Netflix special. Oh, okay. But he's not trending as, as if people really like it. He's just trending because he made one. Well, uh, yeah, I didn't click it, so I don't know why he's trending. <laughs> uh, Ron White, I hung out with him in the old days. He did seem like he was fun to hang out with, but I haven't seen him in so many years. Yeah. You know? But I, 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 he, I always thought he was the funniest of those guys. Not that you need a category of blue-collar comics. Right. Yeah, no, I... Uh, who is it? Foxworthy, White... Larry the Cable Engvall. guy and Engvall. Yeah, um, I do. I also think Ron White is the funniest of them. I never hung out with any of them. No. And the most unpleasant of them is probably Larry the Cable Guy because I think he really is kind of a racist guy. I'm just saying that because uh, not racist. Yes, racist, a right wing guy at least at the very best. Yeah, I got nothing. Oh, yeah, why would you have? I mean, what are you gonna do? You are damn right, Andy or Andy. I insist you don't say that. If you'd like to buy us a cup of coffee, go to buy us a cup of coffee. Why wouldn't you? Dot com. No, maybe that's you'd not like what it's to. Called. That's not what it's called. Are don't you give, sure? Don't give no bad information. We do. Why does okay, that? You, why you, does you, that? You, why does giving the wrong thing to give us money out? Help? I'm gonna hang up. Why does that I'm gonna, help? <laughs> I'm gonna hang up the call, and he won't know. This is why he has no idea. Because I'm looking at him like a regular guy. Do you have anything to plug? Buymeacoffee.com slash thoughts tomorrow. Oh. You know why? I, I, I have a I great album out called Chunks that not enough people have enjoyed. Yeah, they haven't. And I have a great you're movie that, out called Michael DeBar, Who Do You Want Me To Be, that not right. enough people have enjoyed. Oh, God. I wish I could hang up not just on this call, but on my whole life. Don't give me <laughs> fucking, do don't give me cues. <laughs> I don't have. <laughs> Neil, you'll do it when I say. Shiver me temples. Bigger the back of the bigger the back of the boom boop, ba doop ba doop boop.